talk about it, yeah. Talk about it. So that means everywhere I turn, I must disassociate from the housewives of Atlanta, all that foolishness and mess. I must disassociate from keeping up with the car. It's a shame that I'm keeping up with the Kardashians, but I'm lagging behind God in Jesus Christ. If I want to graduate in the things of God, I've got to be found with my head in the word of God. Doubt again is the uncertainty of the mind. So that means now I've eclipsed God and I've allowed myself to be bound by the anxieties of the world. A doubter is one who has two different roles, two, two, two different interpretations, especially in order to deceive and confuse. A doubter now is one who has two different roles, say it like this, I am a traitor. I am a double spy. I think you think I'm working for you, but in reality, you think and know I'm really working for you. But I'm standing in one position, and this side believes one thing, and that side believes another, and that's the epitome of being double-minded. It means I'm split into you think and see me and based on seeing me, you think one way and you think another based on you seeing me. It means, watch this now, a doubter is one who has two different roles. I play this part when I'm with you and facing you. And I play this part when I'm with you and facing you. I act this way when I'm with you over here and I act this way when I'm with you over here. And what do we call that? That's just double faced and double tongued and double this and double that. But God told me to tell you that when you are double, doubting, doubting, double, you're doing something again. The four causes of doubt are one, Satan. Oh, that is certainly true. Number two, unbelief. Number three, worldly wisdom. <clears throat> and number four, the fourth cause of doubt is spiritual instability. Say it again, hurry up, Harold Eugene. Number one, the number one cause of doubt, doubt, double-minded, to be uncertain, to be unsure, is Satan. Remember, I told you now, in order for Satan to destroy you, Satan's got to distract you. And if you're distracted, that means your eye is no longer on the heels from which cometh your help, knowing all of your help cometh from the Lord. You're no longer on your rampart. Talk to me, Habakkuk. And seeing and seeking what the Lord may answer you. You're now looking at the trials of life and the anxieties of life. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough friends. I don't have enough. I don't have this. I don't have that. When will I get this? When will I get that? I'm scared. I'm fearful. I'm frightened. I'm traumatized. This happened to me. That happened to me. This is is happening to me. And if I do that, that will be the consequence. If I do this, that will be the subsequent consequence to all that I decide to do. But when I'm in this life and I've allowed the cares of this life to overwhelm me, that means I'm no longer bathing in the Holy Spirit of God. I've allowed, listen to me now, I've allowed another spirit to creep in, Carolyn, and overwhelm me that you ain't this, you ain't that, you won't get it, God won't give it to you, God's 
promises aren't sure. Oh, you've been waiting too long. Look at everybody else. They're blessed with what you have. Your visions won't come to pass. Your dreams are not real. They're nightmares. And so now you wake up in cold sweats trusting the devil when you thought you were trusting God. So what does it mean to doubt? What does it mean to be double-minded? It means I'm doing something again. That means after being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, I've allowed another spirit to creep in and influence and make decisions in my life. I've been told to fear that I'm 50 and I'm broke. I've been told to fear that I'm 50 and can't find a girlfriend. I've been told to fear. I've been led to fear. I'm learning to fear. And the way you come back all of your doubt, you've got to get out of the world and back in the word of God. Amen. Number one, it's Satan. Satan distracts and then destroys. The second cause of doubt, double, do it again, is unbelief. Number three, worldly vision. And number four, spiritual instability. So there it is now that when I'm doubting, when I'm double, when I'm leaning and doing it again, I'm not spiritually stable. That means I'm vacillating. I'm with God on Sunday only because I'm at church, but I'm with the world on Sunday night and until Saturday night of the following progressive week. Why? Because I'm spiritually unstable. Have you ever met someone that on Sunday they're praising God, but on Tuesday they're complaining about the same God they said they were praising? That's a double-minded person. Like your headache is not because you need glasses, but you just hungry. You've gone all day and you have not eaten. What's the source of your body pain? Well, you stumped your toe and you didn't see about it. I need to get Deacon Pope to the root of why I'm afraid to keep living. The root of why I'm afraid to trust God in the storm. The root of it is the devil is at work in your life. You disbelieve, you don't believe, you're wavering in your belief, but God told me to tell you, you've got to deal with your doubt. And the way you deal with your doubt is you've got to cope with your doubt. And again, forgive my redundancy, to cope with it is to meet it in battle. And you know from this very place that I've talked about battle. The word battle, battle, battle comes as a result of the word beat. So the word beat gives us the word battle. So when we come to the proverbial rings of life, we've got to learn to battle. We've got to battle. And when you battle, that means you've got to beat it. And when you beat it, that means somebody's got to win. And so your attitude today, going out of November, is that if December comes and I see it, if the new year comes and I see it, I'm going to jump in the ring. I'm not running from the demon anymore. I'm not running from the devil. I'm jumping in the face of the devil because at the name of Jesus, demons, they got to flee. I'm going to decide. I'm going to battle for all of my dreams. I'm going to battle for the heart that God gave me to pray. I'm going to battle for every every desire that I believe God had put in my heart because if I keep my eye on the hill, I'm not focused on the anxieties down here, but I'm keeping my chin up. I'm keeping my eyes open. I'm keeping my chest stuck out. I'm keeping my hands elevated always in a perpetual praising position because we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care what you see happening or not happening around you. I don't care what you don't see happening in your life. Your reality is not the reality that's in the reality of the world, but your reality is couched in the super faith reality that comes from the Spirit of God. My reality is birthed from the Word of God. My reality comes from the Word of God. My reality comes from the mind of God. My reality comes from the heart of God. My reality comes from God via the word of God. So when I read the word of God, that's the reality 
of my life because I've read the word of God. And when I stand on the boulevard of commitment and I say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die, the storm will come from the right. The storm will come from the south. But I got my feet standing on the boulevard of commitment and I shall be like a tree that's planted in the rivers of water. I got to bend a little bit. I've got to bow a little bit. But by the power of God, I won't break, Sean. I'm standing here believing everything God promised me. It shall come to pass. Look at somebody and tell them, keep believing. The front pocket of my mind, I'm walking with the word. I'm striving with the word. I'm striving with the word. I'm traversing with the word. As a matter of fact, the word leads me everywhere I go. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. When I get out of here, I need the lamp because it's dark out there where I live. It's dark out there where I work. It's dark out there where I'm hanging out. I am the light of the world and I need the light of the world. So James is talking to people, Amber, who are scattered. They're disjointed from brother. They're disjointed from sister. And now they receive a word of inspiration and encouragement to hang on in there. God has not forgotten who you are or where you are. James now gives pointed instructions on what Christians do that your faith will be lived every day of your life. Faith is necessary when God has made you a promise. And so now faith is not defined by what it's doing. Rather, faith is not defined in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. But faith is described in that perfect provisional passage. That means faith is holding me up to trust and believe that everything God promised me, it shall come to pass. Get home in your private time and reread, reread, reread read the hall of faith that the promise of God the promise of God came to the people of God even though they didn't see it it was reckoned unto them righteous that the word of God is good and it shall happen get ready because God is not a man that God shall lie and if I believe and trust in the word of God Sean I must adjust my life now to the faith that's going to hold me up to believe what's going to happen in my next. I'm not going to get caught by surprise. Talk to me, Noah. It's going to rain. Really? Yes. So build an ark. I don't want to wait till I feel the first raindrop to start banging the hammer nail in the wood. I want to trust God that although it's sunny right now, when God says it, it shall come to pass. I want to talk to somebody that's here today and you're trusting and believing God that everything God promised you is going to come to pass. And I dare you to now stand up on your feet and stand there boldly believing. It may not look like it right now, but I'm trusting that it's already happening because we speak those things that are not as though they were. I dare you to believe God. Look at somebody and tell them, dare to believe. You gotta stay cool too. And no, I'm not a fool I know eventually I'm gonna have to choose And really I don't wanna lose My ticket into heaven and a chance to be used by you And if it's God that I'm after I just can't serve two masters And before something happens I gotta turn it all around Because I know I can't just have my